All right, welcome to this tutorial. We're going to show you how to configure EIGRP authentication. If you remember, OSPF gave us two options when we wanted to uh, implement authentication. The first one was to implement a clear text password. The other one was using an MD5 hash. Well, with EIGRP, it only supports the MD5 hash, okay? However, EIGRP gives us some more options regarding passwords and we're going to see how EIGRP can use multiple passwords for authentication to a single neighbor. Not only that, we can do something pretty cool where we have the uh, passwords expire at certain times. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at these. Let's go ahead and start with the concept of the keychain. Now in EIGRP we're going to configure something called the keychain and we need to give it a name. Here I've named mine colors. And a keychain is just another way of saying I'm going to group a bunch of passwords together. So if you want to use multiple passwords, you organize them by keychains. Now once you create your keychain, then you start creating your keys, your passwords in other words. And you can create many of them, a group, and they're all associated with the same keychain colors. Now, as I mentioned, each one of these passwords can have a shelf life. In other words, it can be expired. And after a certain amount of time, key, were, uh, key one password would expire, and then key two would be used. Over time, that one would expire, and we would move on to the next one. Now, why would we do this? Well, it makes changing passwords very easy. If we have multiple passwords on here, I, I can go ahead and time out the first one and we immediately start using the second one, as opposed to taking off a password, authentication breaks, you put the new password on both routers and then authentication comes back up. That's very disruptive because you've just lost your neighbor during that period. With EIGRP, this is a very seamless transition. Also, from a security standpoint, it's always good to uh, change your passwords regularly. That way, a password that's been used for a long time, you know, it doesn't have as great a chance of being leaked out and shared with people who shouldn't have it. Now, we're not limited to one keychain on a router. We can have multiple keychains, and each interface can reference a different keychain. Now, when we're ready, we'll go ahead and enable authentication on an interface and when we do that we actually reference the keychain itself and we'll see how that's done in just a minute okay so keychains hold passwords these passwords can be expired over time and this is a good security standpoint and also makes life a little bit easier when you want to change your passwords now in our lab we have routers A and B again. They have a single connection via a serial link and router B has already been configured with authentication so that means they are not neighbors because router A has not yet been authenticated. So we'll jump on A, we'll apply our configurations and if it goes well then router A and B will authenticate to each other and then they will become EIGRP neighbors. Okay, let's start by seeing our EIGRP neighbors and because router B is configured for authentication and A is not, we don't have any. However, we do see that the process is running. We have an AS number of 21 currently used. So let's begin. Step one is to create a keychain. So keychain is the command and then we just have to give it a name. So I'll use the word colors and now we have to actually create the keys on the keychain. Each key is identified by a number. So we can just start sequentially at number one. And now we're actually in a position to define the password. The parameter is key string. And all that means is give me the word, give me the password. So I'll start with blue. And then I'll create two more. Key number two, the key string will be yellow and key number three will be green. Okay, so we've created a keychain and the keys. We can issue the show keychain command and here it is. You can see the keychain colors, key one, two, and three, and the passwords. Under each one you can see an accepted lifetime and a send lifetime. That means 
How long will I accept this password and how long can I actually use it to send to somebody else? By default, it's always valid. If we wanted to, we can change that. So I'll give you an example. Since we're still in key three, let's change the accept lifetime. And you can see we can get very, very detailed here. Let's say we want to start on the 1st of January. It'll ask us which year. And then where are we going to stop? What's the, what's the duration? We can get very detailed there as well. Okay, so now if we take a look at our keychain, take a look at key three, the accepted lifetime, meaning for what period of time will we accept this password from another router, is now defined. This means the timing on your routers and the dates and the calendars have to be the same because if, if they have a different concept of time, they'll use passwords that, and that should not be used and you can have authentication problems then. So a point to remember, if you do tailor the expiration dates on your, on your passwords, be sure that all of your routers and, and switches, if they're layer three switches, are running NTP. That way your, your timing is synchronized on your network. Okay, so step one is complete. We have a keychain, it has keys on it. Now, let's go into our interface. Because just like an OSPF where you had to enable the uh, authentication on the interface, we have to do the same thing here. So that's step two is enabling authentication. So in interface mode, IP authentication mode EIGRP and we have to reference the AS number which is 21 and then here we have to state that it's MD5. Okay, so we've just enabled authentication on this interface. Now we have to go ahead and just like OSPF, specify the password. But instead of specifying one password, here we're going to reference the keychain. So IP authentication keychain and we're talking about EIGRP and then we have to state our AS number. You'll see that always comes up when you're configuring EIGRP. After that, the actual keychain itself. So for us, it was colors. So let's take a look at the running configuration of serial 000. You can see we have EIGRP authentication enabled first, and then we reference our keychain. Okay? So let's see if this worked. Show IP EIGRP neighbors. And there it is. Router B is now our neighbor. Now, in terms of um, verification, that is one of the best ways to confirm if your authentication is working. Because if it were not working, we could not become a neighbor to router B. Likewise, what we did, uh, you have two other methods. You can take a look at the keychain configuration on each router and also the interface configuration on each router. Perhaps your keys are different or perhaps you have an expired key on one of your keychains or perhaps you're referencing um, the wrong keychain uh, on an interface. All of those could be factors that prevent two routers from authenticating. Okay. Okay, so let's summarize what we covered. Overall, the process is somewhat similar to OSPF configuration. Um, in OSPF, we just had two steps, enable it and then set the password. But because we have a, the keychain concept in EIGRP, we create that first and then simply we enable it and then we reference the password. Somewhat similar. So our configuration commands, we create our keychain, we create individual keys, and then each key stores the password. After you've done that, we go ahead and enable authentication and again remember this is an interface subcommand. And then once we're enabled, we just go ahead and reference our keychain. If all works, the neighbors come up. If we have configuration problems, they will not authenticate and they will not become neighbors. Okay, so that's it. That is how to configure EIGRP authentication. Thanks for watching.